Uh, welcome to the High Desert Yarn YouTube channel. My name is Joanna and today I'm going to show you how you can work up a beautiful um, little crochet, intarsia crochet uh, swatch by using bobbins. So where you've got this beautiful, we've got this chart here, this graph, um, and we're going to make up little bobbins. So first things first, you need to definitely have yarn. I'm using a paint box Simply Erin today. It is a worsted weight yarn for this project. Um, and you definitely need a graph. And then you need something to create your bobbins with. A lot of people use clothespins because you can stick the end of the yarn in here. You can wrap the yarn that you need for the bobbin around this area. And then the, the end that you'll be working from can just clamp into there. When in doubt, I have used um, note cards that I cut in the smaller sections for smaller bobbins. Um, if you have cardboard laying around, I've used cardboard before. You can even uh, cut a small little slit here to slide that working yarn over as well. And then I just happen to have this giant paper clip. So I'm going to see how this guy works today too. I've never tried a giant paper clip for bobbins but this could potentially work out well. The only um, consideration is that this guy's kind of slick, so the yarn might slide off the bobbin if I'm not careful. So I don't know, just food for thought. And then of course you'll need scissors and then also um, your chart. So this chart is the important piece because we need to look at it and we need to decide how many bobbins we need to make. If you're brand new to color charts and you don't really know um, how to read one. Um, just refer to the designer. Each pattern is going to be a little different. Typically, I read mine from right to left and then left to right. And that's how this chart is going to work up for a practice chart. And if you're following along with um, the spring of 2023 blanket uh, cow, then all the color work sections are also going to work up that way. So if your chart doesn't have it, go ahead and print it out. And then I like to make little arrows of which direction I am working, at least for the first couple of rows, because eventually you'll see, okay, all the odd numbers, I'm gonna work from right to left and all of the even numbers, I'm gonna work from left to right. And then the second piece of information that I'm looking at my chart and trying to decide how many bobbins I need um, is I'm looking at the sections. So I know the first three rows of this chart is going to be using this cream or this off-white color. And I know that I'm going to go over here and I'm going to come here and I'm going to stop right here. And then I'll end up working up all of this area with the same bobbin. All right, and I'm even thinking about it. So I'll come wrap around here because this, this is an odd row. I'll wrap around and come here. And then I'll come over this way. And then I will probably come right here and I'll go all the way across and I'll use the same bobbin over here. So you can kind of see and measure out how much you'll need. So this will be one bobbin in this area. So that means I will need a second bobbin for this area. So I'm just going to mark around the heart. And we're focusing on just this off-white color. Okay, yep. And so I'll need one bobbin here, two bobbins here of the off-white and the only other little section that I will need for a tiny bobbin will be right here. Now I could go ahead and um, probably just combine, never mind, scratch that. Okay, so I know that I will need one, two, three bobbins. I apologize, I wrote the wrong number. 
three bobbins right here of this cream color. So I can come over here to my little legend and write three bobbins or just write the number three so that for whatever your reference is. And then I know for the heart that I'm gonna start here on an even row. So here, go this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, back this way. And then once I get to here, that's where the break starts. So I am actually going to section off this area right here because I know that I will need a new bobbin right there. So I will do one for this green and I'm gonna do two over here. So I know I will need at least two bobbins for the green. Okay, so now that we've kind of mapped this out and um, decided how many bobbins we will need to make, we can start making them. Okay, so for this next part, make sure you have your little containers that you're gonna be making your bobbins out of, whether it's these clothespins or a scrap piece of heavier paper, and then make sure you've got your sister scissors on hand as well. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my cream colored yarn, and I'm gonna take the working end of the yarn and I'm just going to simply start wrapping it around. Now I know that this one, this bobbin is going to be for my biggest section, so I'm going to be fairly generous with making this bobbin. Uh, making bobbins like this is a really great technique when you don't want to um, buy like you know, three different skeins of the same color for a project that doesn't need three skeins of the same color. It's a great way to break up your yarn um, that way so you're not working over the yarn to hide the colors. Um, that can get a little messy, especially when you're dealing with white or um, high contrasting colors. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap and use my best guess and I typically try to like to over guess just a little bit so I don't run out and have to do more. If you do, that's fine. It's just extra ends you have to consider um, weaving in at the end. So I'm gonna be happy with this much right here and I will just trim it. And then since I mentioned the little slit on the end, I will do that with this guy. And just Pop it right there. So I've got my first bobbin made and I can set it aside. So now I'm going to show you how I would do that with the clothespin. Um, I do feel like these are coming in super handy, but we don't always have clothespins for that. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it around the part where it doesn't um, bend open. So I'm starting kind of right at that spring right there and I'll start wrapping it. And now this one, I'm probably gonna make for just this area, so I won't need quite as much on this one. And then also, if you're doing a bigger color work project, we are making a lot of little bobbins, um, then you probably don't, you can always like reuse the bobbins too. I've done that before with past projects where I will overestimate and I will just use that one up until I need to um, add more to the bobbin. All right, so I feel like this is a pretty good amount. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim that. And then I will show you. I just kind of wrap it around and then once I feel like it's tight enough, I just secure it and I make sure it's between the two part pieces of the wood that are actually touching and not in that hole right there, if you can see that hole. So don't put it there, it won't stay um, tight. So I've got two bobbins made. I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest of my bobbins. 
so I can show you how to crochet this up, change your colors, and use the bobbins appropriately. Okay, so now I have made all five of my bobbins. So I know this one corresponds with one, this one goes to two, and then this one goes to three. So I will probably tuck the three one aside, and this is my smaller of the two, um, like forest green, or like it's like a weird grayish pine green. So I'll set that one aside as well. So, bless you, that was my dog. I apologize for the dog sneezes. <laughs> um, so I am just setting aside my bobbins and getting the one that I need first. Um, and then also grab your corresponding hook to your yarn. I'm using a five millimeter today. Okay, so another tidbit about learning how to read um, charts like this, definitely refer to the written pattern, the full pattern, um, but I know we will need a base chain to go along here. So we've got 15 stitches in each row. So I'm gonna go ahead and add an extra chain for 16. I will write that number right here. So we remember to do a chain of 16. So go ahead and do a chain of 16 with your first bobbin that you need for this color section and go ahead and crochet three rows of single crochet. Okay, so we have our first three rows of single crochet um, made. So we're gonna be starting this row four right here and working on this color change. So be sure you have your next bobbin handy. Um, you can even have the one after that handy too, if that's what you need. So I'm gonna chain one, turn my work, and I'm gonna count each square is gonna be worth one stitch, so one single crochet. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna make six and a half stitches and then change my color, and I will show you how to change the color as well. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just... Okay, so we've got six single crochets, and then we've got we need to do a seventh single crochet and the Cream, but then we have to also change colors to get that next stitch in. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my working yarn out of the bobbin so I have it handy. And I am going to keep it right here. And we're going to be working basically half the single crochet or up until that last loop and you pull through to change the color seamlessly. So we're going to insert our hook yarn over and pull up one loop. We've got two loops on our hook and we're going to pull the white working yarn towards us. This is technically the back of the work or the wrong side of the work. And we're gonna secure it right there with our thumb. And then we're going to pick up the working yarn of our next color. For me, it's this beautiful slate green. And I'm gonna try to leave a tail that's at least six inches long from where my index finger is. This probably is a little bit longer, but I like to play it safe. And I'm gonna place it right next to the yarn, the cream yarn that my thumb is holding. And I'm gonna hold both of them right there together. And I'm gonna keep it secure and have plenty of tension on it. And if you need to also come in and grab with your other thumb and just place and hold that nice and tight. So then we're gonna yarn over with the second color and we'll pull through both the loops on our hook. That completes that seventh stitch, but then it also changes the color and sets you up for a perfect seamless color change. And so now, According to the chart, we just have one stitch in the um, green color. So we'll insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. Okay, so we've got two loops on our hook of the second color. 
And then if we look at the chart that we've marked up, we know that we need to go to our next bobbin because all of this cream needs to stay on this side for the one bobbin. So we won't be using this cream working yarn that's gonna be on this left side of the graph. So we're gonna take our second bobbin that we made, undo the working yarn, And just like we changed colors um, for this green stitch, we're gonna do the same for this one. So make sure you pull up enough tail end that way you can weave it in um, at the end when you're done with your piece. And then slide it next to the green that you're holding onto. And then you'll yarn over and pull through the two green loops that are on your hook to finish that stitch. And so go ahead and finish out this row of single crochets in the green color. And then I just wanna know, make sure, this is a great place to make sure that all of your yarn is on the back side of the work. So anytime you're working up an even number, according to this chart, um, you'll be working on the wrong side. That's gonna come in super handy when we weave in all the ends. So I've got all of my ends on the wrong side and no ends on the right side. All right, so I went ahead and chained one. So I'll turn the work. And then I know on row five, that I need to do one, two, three, four, five, six stitches in the cream, but the six stitch um, is the one right before, so we have to do the color change in between. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then the sixth one. So insert and pull up a loop. So you've got two loops on your hook. And then I like to go ahead and make sure I take the bobbin I was working on and try to just set it off to the side. You wanna set it off to the side so we can pull that yarn, that working yarn back over to that side. So right now I'm actually gonna bring my working yarn over so I can grab it with my index finger and just kind of hold it there. So it keeps the tension on it, but I've got my left hand free to pick up the next color. So this is a great time to like look at your stitches and sometimes the, the joining um, stitches where you change colors can kind of loosen up. And so we don't want the holes like that. So I come to the back of my work and I'll just pull that end very gently. And you'll also be able to do this at the end because this is the end of the yarn. So when you're weaving in your ends, pull it gently to tighten it down and you won't have such um, big of a hole. So I'm gonna make sure I pick up the working yarn the one that's attached to the bobbin of the green. And I will finish out this color change. And you might have to kind of stretch it and pull around because you want to make sure this tension back here is the right tension where it's not too tight, but it's also not too loose. And so then reading my chart, we need one, two, three stitches in the green, and then we'll change colors. So one, and I just want to know also that I like to pick up um, this, that carried yarn right there of the green, as well as the two top loops of that stitch. It just will hide the yarn a little bit better and make your finished piece look a little bit more clean. So I did one, two, here's three. Pull up a loop and make sure that this swings to the back and I hold it secure and make sure my bobbin is also out of the way. And then I take the working yarn from my next bobbin and I pull it up. There we go. And I can see that this V kind of um, elongated a little bit. So I'll just come in and tuck that down just a little bit. All right, and I'll finish out the row with single crochets. So that is the gist of how you work up your 
um, intarsia crochet pieces with using bobbins. Now, don't be afraid to add extra to your bob bobbins or if you happen to run out of a bobbin, it's not that big of a deal. Just add more yarn to it. There's plenty of techniques to um, tie two pieces of yarn together that don't make it super noticeable or have you left with weaving in an insane amount of ends at the end. Um, so it just takes time and it takes practice, just like any form of art. Okay, so here I just changed colors again, and I'm gonna make sure I just go underneath and capture this little um, carried yarn piece as well. So this one, I've got five here before I change colors again. Three, four, five. So before I start the fifth one, I'm gonna show you what I like to do. I like to take the, I know this is the yarn. That's not it. This is the yarn I'll be picking up to start this, to finish off the row. So I like to kind of make sure that I bring it up and if it looks good, I will try to trap it as well to carry it to make this edge right here um, more smooth and not quite as jagged. And that was supposed to be a color change. And I pull that to the side, change colors, and then finish on out. So you go ahead and finish up your whole swatch to practice. I highly recommend you doing a practice swatch to get the hang of changing colors and get the hang of using bobbins um, before you start any intarsia crochet piece. And then with this cute little chart and graph, once you finish it, you've got a really cute coaster. Make a really pretty border, use it as a mug rug or a coaster or a super tiny wall hanging. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions about intarsia crochet, changing colors, figuring out your tension, or how to join two pieces of yarn, please, please, please comment below or send me an email at hello at high desert yarn. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day.